you don't, so um, it's a great question because I would never suggest that we label people as toxic. So the way you would, what you're saying, you're absolutely correct. It's beautiful that you need not see people as toxic because you can see the whole person and not just the tip of the iceberg. That is what I invite all of you to do. That is what empaths um, do naturally, and so that's why you do that. You do that naturally, that you can see the whole person. You can see the pain that causes them to be so needy. But here's the question I have for you. If you are fulfilled and you're able to be with these people and help them, then that is fantastic. We need people like you. But if you are filled with guilt because they are like that, and you are feeling that you need to make yourself sick to give yourself an excuse to be able to take care of yourself, then you do need to separate yourself from them. It is not about removing them, and I, and I too, I also never feel comfortable about removing people from my life or feeling that people are toxic. I, I don't like that, um, I don't like saying that, or even feeling that, because I'm aware that someone who is not a good fit for me could still be a wonderful person. They could still be a wonderful spouse, parent, whatever, to a lot of people. So I think in terms of, I need care. That person is draining me because I am the one who's empty. So I take it back to myself. I am not a victim. Whenever we feel that they are a toxic person and, um, and I need to get rid of them or the minute you say they are a toxic person and they are responsible for draining me, it puts me in the victim's um, position. But what I think is I am being drained. I need refueling. I need to remove myself from this situation. It's me. So what you are feeling is very, very healthy empath, a natural empath way of feeling. Where we go off the rails is when we are drained, and we're drained because we can feel everybody's um, pain, and we understand why they're doing what they're doing, but we feel responsible to rescue them, and we feel if we remove ourselves that they're going to wither away or have more problems or die or whatever, and we take it upon ourselves to be their rescuers and caregivers while we are trained. This is something that we are doing wrong, not them, and we need to remove ourselves from that situation and charge our own batteries and take care of ourselves. Is that, is that when you remove yourself and you take care of yourself and you allow to be who you are, what ends up happening is that you attract a different type of person and then those that need help, you have the energy to help them, but if you refuse to go get down into the drama, into the dirt with them, they may choose to fall away. And that's their choice, their choice. So if I put it another way, if you are someone who's uplifted, like we did, we did the meditation yesterday where we kept this upliftment, which you're all holding on to, We've all got it, we're all, you know, what you did yesterday to that meditation that zapped you with life force energy, that's not going to go away anytime soon. So you've got this big aura. Your job is to hold on to that aura, and you don't have to think about it, but really it is about loving yourself and realizing I have this big aura, I am not a victim, wherever I go, I create my circumstances, and you take that with you, and as you move through a room, people get moved by you. You change people with that. But the minute you start to believe that um, I feel guilty because they are in that situation, I, could get, I should get in there with them, it's like you're climbing in to the hole where they are. So in other words, instead of pulling someone out of the hole, you're climbing into the hole with them. And that's what doormats have a tendency to do. If you have crossed over 
from being a healthy, do a healthy empath into being a doormat. What it means is that you have climbed into the hole with them instead of pulling them out of the hole. So if I, to, let me review the whole thing about an empath feels what other people are feeling. And they feel it in their own body as if it's theirs. An empath, very often because they feel it, um, the healthy empaths, because they feel it, they will make sure to charge their own batteries and have plenty of um, life force energy and health around them and in them so that they can handle what other people are feeling. An unhealthy empath who feels what other people are feeling will then feel, oh, in order for me to feel good, I need to make them feel good. And so they physically start to go out of their way trying to make other people feel good. Some people, for whatever reason of their own, have chosen to stay in a place of darkness for a while, for whatever reason. An unhealthy empath is someone who will feel guilty because they cannot rescue that person and will step into that place of darkness with them. That's when we become doormats. So a doormat is somebody who literally will go out, of, not just go out of their way to make others feel good, but will take it upon themselves that even if someone has chosen to stay in a place of darkness for a while, the doormat feels they need to get into that place of darkness with them because they feel so guilty that they are unable to rescue that person. They have taken it on themselves that it is my responsibility to get that person out of that place of darkness and if I can't, I will step in there with them. And that's what makes them a doormat. And then, and that was me. And the only thing that helped me getting to get out was to get cancer myself, so that I could say, ah, oh, now I have a reason or an excuse to get out of that darkness. Does that make it clearer?